So guys, what I got here for you today, basically I felt in love with this sword lance. It's insanely cool and fun weapon. You can get it from the Commander Gaius from the game, from DLC area in Shadow of the Air Tree Elden Ring. And basically after defeating this boss, you will get his remembrance and you can buy this sword from Round Table Hold. And you're seeing right now what you can achieve with this blade. It's a really nice move set. you just poking around, but I got three different builds that completely crush DLC and if you really like this sword as me, watch these builds and you will enjoy them. How they basically crushing everything. And most importantly, you will see fights against bosses and enemies from the main game and also from DLC area, because in DLC you can achieve higher damage numbers while using extra buffs from the DLC area. Okay, so for first build I don't want to change Ash of War, so we will go with Ash of War spinning gravity thrust. It's really cool and basically anime style attack. You jumping into the air, start to spin and destroy your enemies. Why this stuff is good? Basically because you will be able to do a lot of attacks in short amount of time. And that's why we want to change affinity on our weapon. To make our sword lance blood sword lance. You won't be able to change this blood affinity initially, so you need to go and get this uh, wet blade stone that will give you ability to change affinities on different ashes of war. You will see how to get uh, this blade right now in case you don't have it, but here's blood sword lance and what we have here. We need 21 strength and 11 dexterity to wear this sword. It won't change, but with the blood affinity attribute scaling will change. So strength is B scaling, Dexterity E, Arcane D, and it will cause blood loss buildup of 160. That's the craziest and greatest part. Since we're doing a lot of attacks in short amount of time, we will be able to accumulate a lot of blood loss. But for this build I want to be extra tanky. That's why you want to have a shield with this build and go with any great shield you like. The most important part to have ability to change a of War on shield too. So to be able to do it, you need shield with basic smithing stone upgrade pass. So you need to be able to upgrade it up to plus 25, not somber stones, which is basically makes your shield unavailable for a of War change. And there will be Ash of War no skill. That's what you're looking for. This way you will be able to pick up your shield in your hand, you will be able to guard yourself, while at the same time use Ash of War from the main hand weapon. And you will be able to change affinity on your shield too. So make sure to check all affinities you have and pick the right affinity for the boss, because if you don't know when you're picking different affinities for the skill of your shield, even when there is no skill, it will affect what guarded damage negotiations you will have. So for example, if you're facing a lot of holy damage, like with the last bosses most of the time, Sacred Shield is the way to go. It will give you 100 holy negotiation. That's crazy. Now let's talk about scaling. So I will show you how different attributes affect this weapon. And basically I'm starting with attributes that will give me ability to use this weapon. And now let's check 80 points in Arcane. Most of the time 80 points is a hard cap, they're basically a diminishing crit afterwards and you won't get a lot of benefits by getting more points than 80 most of the time. So 80 arcane will give us 464 damage total. That's what we are looking for, so our damage on the right hand ornament. Then if we check strength scaling, it will give us 564 damage already. That's impressive and that's basically our main attribute to scale the damage of this weapon of course. But there is one more thing, so basically with leveling of arcane you will get more blood loss build up, at least I guess it works like that. But there will be diminishing return after 45 points in arcane. So that's why this is my build for level 150. We go with 50 Wigger. it will give us a lot of health to being able to sustain damage and we definitely need this ability to sustain damage because we are very very vulnerable, especially when we're using this Ash of War. So the next stat is Endurance. Endurance is important too. It will give you more stamina, but most importantly more carry capacity. And this will give you ability to carry best weapons and great shield and great big heavy armor at the same time. So this basically gives you ability to get best armor that you possibly can. 
Since strength give us most benefits for our damage, I'm going with 40 strength. But again, to accumulate blood loss faster and do more damage, basically, we need arcane. So at level 150, I recommend to mix it up with 40 strength and 40 arcane. While at the same time, I think a really nice buff for this build is flame grant me strength. So we want to be tanky, we don't want to take additional damage and 15 phase will give us this body buff flame grant me strength. So 15 phase, in my opinion, really nice pick for this. Also thing to consider is to reduce a little bit of strength right now and get 14 points in dexterity. So why do we need it? Basically look at my build for level 200. We got same vigor, we got same endurance of 50 points, but I'm maxing out my strength as high as possible. It will be 77 points right now with 45 in arcane. 15 phase, but most importantly 14 dexterity. And again, you can want to have this 14 dexterity a lot earlier. It will give you ability to pick commander standard in your hands and use it Ash of War. So Ash of War is really cool buff and basically best buff in the game that will give you bonus protection and bonus damage at the same time and it's aura buff. This means it stacks with body buff. And body buffs, there's different ones. You can eat, for example, boiled crab it's a body buff too and it will give you more protection while well, you can basically use flame grant me strength and it will increase your damage a little bit so that's how you mix up your buffs in this build and now let's talk about build itself so we're going with shard of alexander and shard of alexander is a no-brainer pick because it will greatly boost attack power of skills greatly boosting attack power of skills is what we need but also don't forget we're not making glass cannon this time we're making really nice and balanced character to have a lot of fun in elden ring and that's why i want you to have some protective talismans so dragon crest talisman is a great pick or any other protective talisman that will increase your physical resistance and actually i like to run this build with double protective talisman so for example spell drake talisman this uh, will boost your magic damage reduction and you need to pick second talisman depending on what bosses what enemies you're facing so if you're facing a lot of enemies who are using fire attacks go with flame drake talisman and so on so just uh, find out what damage enemies use against you and use the right talisman but of course since we are using blood loss as the main damaging ability we need lord of blood's exaltation so lot of blood's exaltation is a no-brainer pick because it will raise attack power when blood loss occurs and basically it's completely free damage buff for ourselves the thing to consider is to actually how much damaging talismans you need since blood loss loss is basically a nice ability to have and you can't accumulate it with talisman you can only accumulate your damage and do more damage uh, you can actually run like four protective talismans pretty easily and that's what i did in the build i showed recently on the channel it uses the same sword lens and that's uh, the video where i showing how to get sword lens as early as possible so if you enjoy builds in this video there will be a link by the end of this video and also in the description so another important stuff for this build is kind of optional but again since we're running blood build you actually want this white mask so white mask is really nice stuff and it will give you additional damage when blood loss occurs and since we're doing blood loss most of the time a lot of time again it's pretty much no brainer pick for additional damage why not we are pretty tanky and this mask won't hurt you so, the next one is Wondrous Physique. Yeah, Wondrous Physique is really important and, uh, you know, you can't buff your damage uh, when you're using blood loss as the main damaging source, right? Kind of. But there's a new cracked tier in this DLC and I really recommend trying this stuff. It will be blood sucking cracked tier and basically it will drain your HP but will really nicely increase your attack power and, uh, you know, I like this attack power and I just uh, slam Opaline Heart tier on top of this and that's nice wondrous physic. We got a lot of damage negotiation but also pretty much power. You see on the screen right now basically how I'm destroying bosses and uh, that's basically the build. But right now let's take a look at the next Sword Lance build. And we will be running with a Sacred Sword Lance. And in my opinion that's insanely fun, cool and really 
easy to get, uh, easy to play build, and you will enjoy a lot of Elden Ring with it. So let's take a look at this stuff. Basically, we're going with Sacred Weapon, and Sacred Weapon will give us attribute scaling of Strength, Dexterity, and Face. That's the cool stuff. I'm running really cool Ash of War for this stuff. It will be Ash of War Thunderbolt. So basically, you're picking up your sword lance, you're raising up to the sky, and the lightning occurs right at the enemy head. And that's completely no brainer, no skill, skill. You just spam in this button and it destroys enemies. As you can see, as always, I'm showing you the damage against normal enemies in the Elden Ring and also in the Shadow of the Earth DLC area. So in case you can't get same damage numbers, you just need to make sure you're using same buffs as me, but also you got some scattered tree fragments. Yeah, every scattered tree buff will give you more damage and basically I'm showing almost maxed out characters and you will get these damage numbers in DLC area if you got scattered tree fragments. In normal Elden Ring you see damage against normal enemy. But again, the skill is insanely cool, insanely fun and you will see right now how I'm destroying bosses with it and <laughs> bosses is almost a joke with this Age of War. And uh, let's talk about our scaling. So, dexterity scaling with the second sword will give us 634 damage. Not bad, definitely not bad. But if we will level up face, it will give us 722 damage already. That's pretty crazy. So this basically gives us idea that main scaling ability for our build will be face. But there is also strength that gives us 696 damage. And that's actually crazy. So basically every attribute will give you pretty nice damage boost. Therefore, it's a really nice build to scale in the late game to make it powerful and more powerful while you progress through the game because you will be able to basically get my build at level 150, then at level 200 and continue leveling up with all these attributes later on for even more damage. But now let's take a look at level 150. And you will find really some interesting stuff over here. So first of all, you need to make sure to have 16 mind. In my opinion, that's a sweet spot to being able to cast Thunderbolt until your mana will deplete completely. I don't want to have any unused mana or it will be basically a waste of mana potions. So that's a great idea. Then I'm getting my Wigger up to 54. Actually, I want 55 later on. But since we are standing in the range from enemies most of the time and doing some damage with our Ash of War, I guess Endurance is the next stuff that we can actually sacrifice a little bit. And 45 is a nice sweet spot to being able to get some good armor, but at the same time have additional points in damage. And I'm running with 40 strength, 14 dexterity and 40 face. So I'm basically lining up my strength and dexterity. I'm basically lining up my strength and face, but coolest part that you actually can sacrifice this damage almost completely. Because your main damaging spell will be this Ash of War. You will be using spell most of the time. And why do we need Sword Lance then? Because Sword Lance got a really cool and nice move set. I just enjoy this poking, you know, range of this weapon. It's insanely cool, fun, and that's why I'm showing this build today. So we got really nice and mixed character for this build. Basically, we can attack from the range, but when enemy come close, we can poke him to dash really insanely fast and easy. So let's take a look at build at level 200. We're going with 60 Wigger. Again, we can be insanely tanky, we don't need high face, high strength, since we're doing most damage with our ability. And 16 Mind is the same, 50 Endurance for better armor, 60 Strength and 60 Face. So I tried to level up face more, but I found that that's kind of best sweet spot to have 60, 60 in both of them. 14 dexterity for the same reason like previous build, to being able to wear commander's standard and get basically the best buff in the game. But if you want the same damaging numbers as me, you need right talisman combination. But I'm not going completely like no brainer glass cannon build, again we're making pretty balanced characters that will be insanely OP and pretty fun to play in DLC zone. So, first one is Dragon Quest Great Shield Talisman. Again, 
just go with protective talisman get some protection don't die and when you're alive you can do damage you know it doesn't matter how hard you hit if you're basically dying in a few hits so with this build you can like endure and take a lot of hits and be completely fine now let's talk about our real damaging stuff it will be the lightning scorpion charm so it will raise lightning attack power and this gives uh, around 20 percent damage amplification for our lightning spell that's cool the problem be basically running sacred sword to being able to scale it with face and that's why we're running with this lightning scorpion charm that will inflict additional damage to us not exactly scorpion but we will take more damage with high face i'm using hall of shabriri that's the body buff we can use to even more increase damage from lightning spell but the problem it's two sources that increase in damage that we take basically so to counter the stuff you need some additional protection from range and we got it covered so pearl shield talisman this talisman will protect you from range from different range attacks when co someone comes in melee range to you you can just run away or poke him a little bit if he's not really scary but uh, most of the time you will try to run away a little bit and then go from the distance sometimes enemies will try to hit spells on you you know they will shoot you with some different spells and crazy abilities that's where the pearl shield talisman comes it will increase protection when you raise your shield against spells and that's insanely powerful stuff never underestimate this talisman it's insanely cool and last one can be another protective talisman or you can go with shard of alexander of course since we're going for damage shard of alexander will give additional 15 percent of damage to our skill and that's why we're running this on build today and don't forget there's another buff stuff that you need to be able to do this damage numbers and it's of course wondrous physique so it will be lightning shrouding cracketeer again pretty much no-brainer pick it will boost your lightning attacks and that's how we get in this high numbers and second one basically you can go for damaging like blood sucking cricket uh, like cricketeer or whatever it is but i like to go with applying heart tier i think our damage is already pretty much like really high enough to be able to defeat most enemies you need but survivability is what we're lacking a little bit and this heart tier will cover this stuff and basically we will be completely fine but what if you don't want to kind of chase the game with this age of war you know you want to go and fight like a real man with your sword lance the next build is for you so let's start with Ash of War. It will be Crack Blade. You dump in it into Grease and it will do additional damage to stands and will more likely break enemy stands and also do additional damage. The damage is just insane. You will see these numbers, especially in DLC, they are just crazy. It's like uh, 6k damage in one hit with charge attack and that's pretty nice so another cool part since uh, this ash of war doesn't require you to use it a lot and you basically buff your sword and that's weapon buff you can use your shield abilities that's uh, what i like so basically you can run it with any shield and any shield skill you like you can go with the newest shield with insanely cool abilities that basically pushes enemies away but it's not working against all bosses so just pick whatever shield you like you can mix and match with whatever you like and another stuff if you want to do even more damage you see in, in the video basically i'm using this jellyfish shield and the jellyfish shield gives additional damage so you can completely buff this uh, blade and go <laughs> slam your enemies it's pretty fun to poke with this high amount of damage but how this damage basically occurred and that's because we're not using basic correct blade we using flame art sword lance so we need correct blade as of war with flame art affinity and if you don't have this affinity you need to write with stone to make it work basically so you will see on the screen right now how to get it it's pretty easy it's not too far in the game so you probably already have it but whatever so this sword will scale with strength dexterity but most importantly with face of course with c scaling in the face that's pretty good and just take a look at damage numbers so with 80 face we will rock 712 damage that's pretty impressive but with 80 strength 
we are running almost 700 again, just 693 damage. So considering all of this, that's my build for level 150. You want to go with around 45 Vigor, around 40 Endurance. We want uh, some nice armor, but again with this build you can mix and match armor so you can do whatever you like. For example, if you want to do more damage, but take a little bit more damage, you can go with Rakshasa armor, that red armor in DLC I'm using for max damage, but also I'm enjoying like pretty heavy armors to being able to protect myself and take almost zero damage reflect attacks with my shield and then poke enemies with like 2k damage strikes. So to do the strikes again at level 150 we're going with 40 strength and we're running 15 dexterity. That's a mistake, so you need just 14 dexterity of course to be able to run this commander standard for best over buff in the game. And we want a face a little bit higher than your strength, so going by the soft hard caps basically it will be 40, 60, 80. So just stick to these numbers, go with 40 strength first, then with 60 face, then level up your strength to 60 and then face to 80. And that's what you will see at level 200. So basically at level 200 I'm getting more strength, more face, but I'm not hitting hard caps right now because I think at these high levels you want a little bit more protection. You're doing already like insane amount of damage. Why not to wear really good armor? So for this build I really like high endurance, but if you don't like high endurance you can go with 40 endurance and max out your face and get more strength really easily. You can mix and match. And you see on the screen right now this damage numbers with a non-maxed character. I'm not maxing my damage abilities, but the damage is just insane. So, how we can get these damage numbers? Basically, you can have this black dumpling hit. It's pretty cool one, because when you run with some madness, uh, you will get additional damage. And to get madness, we got high face. This means we can use Hall of Shabriri spell, incantation to be like precise. And this incantation, when used multiple times, you will be able to buff yourself and... Uh, at the same time you will make yourself mad, you will lose a little bit of mana, you will lose a little bit of health, but it will trigger Black Dumpling, same as Aged one exaltation. That's a new talisman, and this talisman makes basically the same effect as Black Dumpling. It gives you additional damage after you inflict it or take madness effect. The next talismans will depend on what damage and what abilities you use. So, uh, for this build especially, I like to run around and do charge attacks. So, that's uh, my talismans and how they work. You can like mix and match them with all builds, as I tell you. Basically, do whatever you want. So, first one is Axe Talisman, basic talisman from the game. When you're doing charge attack, it will do more damage. It's simple and straightforward. The next one, since we're doing fire attack, it will be Fire Scorpion Charm. So yeah, again, no brainer, we're doing a lot of fire damage, especially with face scaling. That's why we need this Fire Scorpion Charm. It will make you take more damage, but again, we are pretty protected and that's why I'm running high endurance with good armor, so I can afford myself to take more damage with this Fire Scorpion Charm and Hall of Shabriri, of course. Hall of Shabriri will increase damage taken by a significant amount and most of the time with Hall of Shabriri you will become Glass Cannon, but not me. You're basically seeing on the screen right now, I can take a lot of hits and I'm completely fine. And next one is pretty fun new talisman lacerating crossed tree and I'm using this not against bosses most of the time because against bosses I like to pick up my shield and run some protective talismans actually and I mix and match talismans for this build a lot so I'm not sticking with only one build of talismans against some really hard hitting bosses you want to actually remove this H to one's exaltation and you want to remove this black dumpling and you don't want to use Hall of Shabriri because we got flame grunt mystery strength. It will increase our physical damage and fire damage, so that's kind of no-brainer body buff for us and that's uh, like best in slot spell actually, but if you want more damage go with Hall of Shabriri, H1 Exaltation, Black Dumpling, but be ready to take really hard beating too. So, the last talisman is Lacerating Crossed Tree, that I'm not using against bosses most of the time, but I'm having a lot of fun against normal enemies. So, it enhances dash attacks, and since I'm running and using my charge attacks, it's enhancing it even more, and that's uh, where we can get the 6 uh, plus K damage numbers. 
that's pretty crazy. And another crazy stuff, how we can achieve this, is our Wondrous Physic, of course. So, Wondrous Physic will be Flame Shrouding Cracker Tear, again, boosting our flame damage, but also Oil Soaked Tear. That's a new tear, you can get it easy, really early in the game, in DLC area, and it will coat your surroundings in oil. Therefore, they will take additional damage from fire, and basically you're running, you're coating them with oil, and then you're destroying them with charge attacks. Charge dash attacks, of course. So, I hope you enjoyed these builds, uh, they are really awesome, I had a lot of fun with them. Make sure to watch other cool videos on the screen right now, and there's one video where I'm showing how to get this sword lance, make sure to watch it, and see you in the next videos, guys!